Fill our worship with grace, Lord Jesus Christ, that every thought, word, and deed may be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. And as we gather together, we know that our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. And now grace to you and peace from God Almighty and Jesus Christ, our Lord, through the powerful work of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in Christ, with delight we prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels and go in heart and mind to Bethlehem to see Mary and Joseph with Jesus in a manger. Let us listen to the story of God's loving purpose, which traces God's saving act from humanity's first disobedience down to the glorious redemption brought to all by this holy child. And let us make these hallowed walls reverberate with the glad tidings of great joy, which is to all the people. Let us now confess our sins, knowing that God is ready and willing to forgive. Let us pray. O God, who rules all creation, hear now our confession. We do not always bring joy to this world in words spoken in anger, 
or words silenced by fear. We do not always go and tell it on the mountain, lest someone expect us to practice what we preach. We do not always let your light shine through us, lest it reveal places in our lives we prefer to keep in shadows. So forgive us, O God, for not being your children, which is to say, for not being ourselves. And we give you thanks on this good and glad day that you come not to run us into the ground, but to raise us up to new life. And let the people of God say, Amen. Here is the good news. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. I can proclaim to you in the name of Christ that your sins are forgiven. And then, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 through 2, give us good guidance on how we ought to live and how to show our gratitude for God's forgiveness. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, of what is good and acceptable and perfect. Amen. Our Psalter reading is from Psalm 148. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all his host. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise him, your highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever. He fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth. You see monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. He has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful for the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. for the children. I found a special message I would like to share with you today. I'm sure that most of you know who this is, the Grinch that stole Christmas. 
You remember how the story goes. Everyone in Whoville loved Christmas. Everyone, that is, except the Grinch. The Grinch hated Christmas and made up a plan to spoil the joy of Christmas. His plan was to dress up as Santa Claus and steal all of the Who's Christmas presents, their Christmas tree, and even the food for their Christmas dinner. What a terrible thing to do! Do you know why the Grinch hated Christmas so much? According to the story, it was because his heart was too small. He was so selfish that he hated to see anyone else feeling happy. But we also know the Grinch's plan did not work. Why? Because the Who's in Whoville knew that the real joy of Christmas does not come from presents, decorations, and food. It comes from a heart filled with love. The story of how the Grinch stole Christmas is not a true story. But this morning, I want to tell you about another Grinch who did try to steal Christmas. In fact, he tried to steal the very first Christmas. This Grinch was a king named Herod. After Jesus was born, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking where they could find the child who had been born to be the king of the Jews. We have seen his star in the sky and want to worship him, they said. When Herod heard about this, he told the wise men after they found the child, they should return and tell him where he could find the child so he could go and worship the baby. The truth is, Herod didn't really want to worship Jesus. He came up with a plan to steal the first Christmas. Why? Perhaps his heart was too small. Herod was so selfish that he was afraid Jesus would take over his kingdom. Well, Herod's plan to take away Christmas didn't work. After the wise men found Jesus and gave him gifts, an angel told them about Herod's plan, and they went back home without telling Herod where to find Jesus. And so we see that since the very first Christmas, Grinches have been trying to steal the joy of Christmas. There may be some Grinches that are trying to steal your Christmas joy. It will never work unless your heart is too small. Make sure that your heart is big enough to share the love and joy of Christmas with everyone you meet, not just at Christmas, but all year long. Let us pray. Dear Father, we thank you for the joy that Jesus brings. Let us have hearts filled with love so we may share the joy of Christmas with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The willingness to give is a sign of life. The fruit tree gives of its fruit, and we know it's alive. When it no longer gives, we know real life has gone out of it. The heart that hoards the blessings of God is no longer alive with spiritual power. To give is to live.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord of hosts, and through the birth of Jesus Christ, our friend, we dedicate ourselves and these gifts to Jesus. Through them, change this world and change us, renew this world and renew us, and restore all to yourself. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Festival of Nine Lessons and Carols. God tells sinful Adam that he has lost the life of paradise and that his seed will bruise the serpent's head. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you, and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice.
The prophet foretells the coming of the Savior. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time, he brought into contempt the land of Zebulon and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time, he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rot of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burnt as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us, authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The peace that Christ will bring is foreshown. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah. From you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore, he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel." And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth.
the angel Gabriel salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Matthew tells of the birth of Jesus. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through his prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son and he named him Jesus.
The shepherds go to the manger. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and see as it had been told them. The wise men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure, treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh.
John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone who was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever. Amen. And now may the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God Almighty, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.